That's all right. We're fine. The, re the record producer today really is going to, um, he's going to become what the vice president of the United States. I mean, it's just going to be a formality, you know. It's not going to really be anything uh, to, to any great respect. It's going to be something that nobody really wants to do. Because um, it, in, it involves uh, giving up something to a producer financially and emotionally. And uh, record producers you usually find are very involved with their personnel. And it's extremely difficult to be objective about somebody when you're so involved with them. It's very hard to be objective about your wife or your shoes or anything if you're wearing them. I mean, it's just hard to. And most of the producers I see live with the groups or uh, very attached to them. And uh, I don't know about Tiny Tim as <laughs> a producer. I don't know. <laughs> they go to the ball game together. I don't know what that is. But they, uh, I don't know what the record producer's role is going to be. I, I imagine that. Uh, I mean, what happens is you get in that rut. I, I, I've seen like the underground press in particular write, a, they write a lot of things about a lot of people. But once they label somebody, why they say genius, they use the word so freely. They use the startling creative genius of and the da 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 of, you know. They have these words, you know, to build the, e it's almost like I see they're building the egos up. I see producers today commanding big prices for their talent and have really done nothing. You know, they haven't made one-tenth of the hits of, let's say, like a Bob Crew, of whom I have no real respect, because he's not, I don't consider him a record producer of any real great talent. I think he's an average record producer, the faggot's approach to, uh, to rock and roll or whatever, I don't know. So this is, you know, this is what I see, but, I mean, I, I know people who own big record companies, independent ones. People come in and they, you know, they get a big list of records this guy brings in, the guy like made one hit, you know, with the 1910 Fruit Gun Company or something. And he's got 20 and the guy, you, know, you go through the records and you see Morris Levy's stump prints on them and, uh, you know, Al Bennett's stump prints. And you know the record's been played a hundred times and rejected. Finally, you hear one thing that sounds a little decent. So you say to the guy, hey, what, uh, how much you want? He's $20,000. $20,000 for that? And he says, I only think it's good. I don't think, it's, well, that's what I want. He says, well, why? He says, because I can get it down the street. And that's exactly what it comes out to. It happened with the Love and Spoonful, it happened with the Rascals. The people involved wanted so much money because they wanted to take a free ride off the group, you know, to set themselves up in business. They knew they had great talent. They knew they really didn't need a producer because the group had so much, you know, strong material right there and it had a Sebastian to write it or, or whatever. And they really didn't need necessarily a record producer. They can go to RCA and you know, wheel and deal all kinds of money and bring in the owners of a lot of record companies and have them all bid. And eventually, I mean, I've heard that recently, I mean, the price on the Big Brother and the holding company was absolutely absurd as to what that group got. And I heard some other blues bands, the Cotton Blues Band, some of, you know, what I would call absurd financial. I'm happy that the cats are making it, you know, I mean, let them all get 10 million, I don't care. But if these are what the leaders of the industry are giving away, you know, it's, it's kind of weird that, uh, that it's come down to that. And I think that they will, um, well, I, I mean, you know, I, still, I think the producers always need it, but the kind of producer that I see is different than the kind of producer that, that they see. Just like in sports, you know, what they see is Babe Ruth today isn't really, I mean, Frank Howard hits a lot of home runs, but we don't know what, Frank Howard would be if Babe Ruth were here, or if Babe Ruth would be impressed with having Frank Howard's home runs, or not. We don't really know, because um, it's a different generation, and we can't expect everybody to just keep living in the past. But as far as records are concerned, I really, I see that the, the role of the producer for what it was is, not, is no longer important. But my role as a record producer will be important because I have a different approach to records, and there are a few people who still do. Uh, I mean, knowing a lot of the people, I see them, uh, and a lot of the producers are very frightened of their artists to tell them what to do. You know, I was talking with Cass Elliott the other night, and she said, so what are you going to do, Cass? She says, well, I'm going to go on my own, sing, 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 sing. So what are you going to sing? She says, I'm going to have all great composers write me a song. I said, you're going to call Irving Berlin up? And I, go, I, I, I don't know what you, you know, what are you going to do? I figure, you know, maybe you got this hit out now, you know, you're singing an old time song, maybe that. She said, no, 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 I know, I'm, I'm gonna go call, I'm gonna go to Dylan, I'm gonna go to Donovan, I'm gonna go to this one, all over, and I'm gonna get their songs. Joni Mitchell, 
you know, like, which is real death for Cass Elliot. You know, I said, to me, that's like, you don't have to do that at all. You know, Kate Smith is alive and well inside of you. I mean, just do a tribute to her and you're going to sell four million albums to the adults. I mean, I mean, what do you want? Yeah, I'm going to go, I'm going to get musicians, and I'm going to form my own group, and we're going to record spontaneity, you know, with spontaneity right there, and that's it. So, so you're going to form another Love and Spoonful. That's really what you're doing. You're going to get four mm. good musicians, and they're going to back you up. What, what does it do? Well, you don't understand, Phil. It's, uh, and her producer, who's a talented boy, will go in that direction with her, instead of necessarily maybe going to Europe and recording with a hundred-piece orchestra or doing something really phenomenal with her or making a joke and having her sing all the old songs beautifully or making her sing the new songs. They get, you know, I don't know whether it's, you know, the thing to do is to be very in today, and it's very easily, very easy to talk people into doing things today. And uh, these people have dynamic personalities, a lot of these artists, and they will compromise very little. Myself, I'm not actively involved in the record. This has been a couple of years now, so I can sort of look objectively at it, and I see them limiting themselves tremendously. They don't know whether they want to make a hit record. They don't know whether they want to make a star record. They don't know whether they make an impact record. They don't know whether they want to be a songwriter. They, they're not sure yet. So, you know, and to me, it's a record business. And when the needle goes on the record, it's the record that's going to tell where it's at, not necessarily. I mean, I've heard a lot of bad, you know, good songs go down the drain. I've heard a lot of bad records go down the drain, you know, because, you know, you need direction. And I, that's why I really feel about 80% of the big talent in this country is being stifled. I mean, you have giants like the Everly Brothers, you have Elvis Presley, you have Roy Orbison, no direction. You know, they're just sitting around mm -hmm. looking for some direction. They made a lot of mistakes, they may have gone with the wrong people, whatever, but direction is really the whole thing. And that's really what a producer's role is. Mm -hmm. As a director, he's supposed to direct you into what to do. And I don't see it really happening today. And